Um, we're designing, we made some mosaic Damascus. It's what I like to call the tiger stripe pattern. Uh, so you make W's and you just stack them and stack them and stack them until you get enough. And the pattern gets really small. So before I cut the bar, for me and Casey and Kyle, uh, I really want to know what size this hawk head's going to be. So uh, be making the tomahawk head, milling a slot, and then it'll all forge weld back together. And that'll be cool. cool. That's the way so I like to do it. I've uh, uh, done this technique, technique several times, times before, before, and it, it never, never fails. fails. So the, the idea, idea first is, is to get uh, to get to the, get the right, right amount of steel. steel. You want to know how much steel it is. So I need to know how the size and make it a pattern. And I do this always for choppers, knives, hunters, all that stuff. Especially when I have some steel that I don't want to screw up, right? Because it's not really my steel now. It's their steel. They're taking, They're taking a class. A class. I, don't I don't commonly, commonly teach, teach a mosaic, mosaic Damascus, Damascus class. class. Unless you've been here a lot of times like they have and you really know what you're doing, then we can make a special class for you. But for today, that's what we're doing. So that's the ax head. It goes this way. We're just going to trim it down now on the saw because I'm, I'm thinking out loud and that's why I'm not committed to just saying, okay, let's go do this guy. Mm -hmm. No, I like to look. Because the process goes along. I had a formula for the way I make mine, but you know, we're doing this a little different. It always ends up being too good at first, it's like everything. This saw blade is so freaking dull. Don't try Don't to grab it out grab because it. it's really stupid. I'm going to save some time by doing that, pulling my finger into the bandsaw, cutting my thumb off, and having to spend uh, the whole rest of the day in the hospital. <laughs> so don't do dumb stuff in the shop, right? I want to see how many pieces of wood someone will pick up. <laughs> I had somebody in another class, and I was, I was like, drop something on the ground, and they were being applied, so they'd pick it up and throw the trash. I was like, ooh, that looks funny. <laughs> so I kept doing it, and they were like, they didn't know I was joking with them, you know, they just kept picking it up and throwing the trash. I'm like, I should quit now. I feel bad. I, I, didn't, I didn't stop because they weren't stopping. They kept doing it. I just I was like, well, they don't really get it. I'm just joking, and they're not. So I was like, I have to quit. Unless they really were joking to prove they were just a better human being than me because I was entertained by some sort of people. Ah! That means your buddies don't change it. Oh, that's such a cute reason to come as well. How you feel about the line on the top? How do I feel about it? Yeah. Oh, to cut that off? I think that'd be nice. Just so there's... Yeah, a little bit of yeah. an aggressive yeah. Aggressiveness. Ah, uh, your tomahawk is too aggressive, Mr. Ward. You're gonna have to go to time out.
profile a little better. So they can actually Good thing we bought this new lamp. It doesn't work. Why doesn't it work? Huh? What's wrong with it? I think the, the bulb broke in the about bulb. five yeah. seconds. Yeah. yeah. The lamp didn't break, but I just need a better bulb. So hey, do you do you understand what I'm talking about? Yeah. Um, you can switch it over there and use the platen if you want, or you can just freehand it. What do you want to do? Too many, too, too long, long. took too long. I'm just, I'm deciding for you. You made too long of a decision. <laughs> you want to do this or not? I do it. Okay, go ahead. Unless you did say something and I couldn't hear it. Mm -hmm. something and I tell your brother this, but I don't know if I told you. You guys have race car drivers names. No, I remember. Kyle Ward and Casey Ward. No! <laughs> this left turn kind of race car driver though, you know? Yeah. And it's going around this way. Okay, cool. Our names aren't Italian enough for right turn. Yeah. Yeah, that's cars that we're the fans in the car. Get up in there. Yeah? Not very well. making a pattern. I don't know. Is anybody watching? <laughs> okay. Any questions? Not yet. Okay, good. Good. I don't want to answer any questions anyway, but I will if you really want me to. So the next thing we're going to do is, I think the, man, I feel like the shop is such a mess today. Like people have been working in here all week. Go ahead. Damn it. Spill the acetone. Knock that over. Whose coffee is this? Quentin. Um, we'll make it. Thicker than that, but not much. Because that's like a little S-wing hatchet's ain't much thicker than that. Hmm. 
You don't want it to be too heavy because then it's going to be like a clunker. So right. it's really weird, you know, making stuff like this because you got to like the design level is, I don't know, it's like the shape. It's the one thing you see when you when you lock, you look at a hatchet and you pick up a hatchet like, oh, that's really nice. But most of the time it's like, oh, that's a, oh, that's a clunker. You know? yeah. So we don't want it to be a clunker. We want it to be a functional, beautiful, badass piece of gear usable even though so we'll just split that i'll split it since the belt's dull i don't want to even cut my finger off your finger off <laughs> okay huh? i just i was just checking you lost it I'm not this is don't ever buy one of these this is <laughs> this light sucks led lights i guess it never gets turned off well, probably my fault i want to blame it on somebody else but not Guandu. Ka-chow! All right. So what we can do now is um, can shape this how you think it should be shaped. And he can shape his how he thinks it should be shaped. Where'd he go? I think that's a cool little tomahawk head. That's a nice little axe. So the idea is we're gonna mill a little groove in there and then we're gonna put the handle through and then uh, we're gonna weld it all together and then we'll put wooden hands on it. It'll be cool. That's perfect. Awesome. And then we got a bit of a hammerhead there for we'll leave that wide and flat. Yep. And I think that's cool. I like it. Let's do it. So if you guys want to grind on them a little bit just to see that shape, you know, see where that shape is going to go, um, that would be cool. So we're going to you can just leave this side thick and bevel it down towards the edge. I don't know. I'm going to let you play with it. I'm going to let you decide. So we got we got a, plat, a flat plat and then a wheel over here. So um, you can, there's multiples of ways to make that thing shape. So what I'm thinking is we'll probably leave them about, they're a little thinner than that. That's a little too thick for the integral. You know, like, a, you, know, if, like you think about an S-wing hatchet, they're not that thick. They're maybe that thick at the thickest part, but they go, you know, swoop in there. You ever use one, you know, they get little leather handles. Oh, yeah, yeah. They're cool. Yeah, those are they're actually pretty cool. So we're going to go with that idea. The ones I made before don't usually, I mean, they're three-eighths maybe. That's a half inch. So I will let you grind. One grind here, one grind here. Switch back and forth. You can get your mask. We can open this door, even though it's cold. Man, that's a pretty truck. Is that your truck? Does it go fast? Yeah. Is it Chevy? Mm -hmm. so they took the bail out? Yeah. They took the bank bail out. That's okay. You want us to go ahead and bevel them? Yeah, just play with the idea a little bit. Yeah. It doesn't mean we're going to necessarily use that, but it helps us get an idea of how much steel we need. So you, you'll know how much steel you're going to need to make that axe. Oh, I see what you're saying. You see what I mean? So. Now I've never, I've never beveled a hatchet before. Okay. So, is there a technique? Mm. Am I beveling towards myself just like I would with a knife? Yeah, you could. Okay. You can do that. All right. And switch back and forth. The other thing we made was. Uh, Hi, Kitty. What's up, Bean? So, what we got? Anything interesting? Um, just really, just people saying hey. Oh, cool. Hey. 
So while they're doing that, uh, I'm gonna see if I can reveal the steel. So if you got, would you all like to see the steel? Yes, I'm guessing you would. <laughs> I'm trying to be interactive with the crowd. So what we're gonna do is, I believe that we'll be able to cut it on a saw because I let it get soft last night. So I'll just trim the end off and then you can see the pattern. Uh, where did the steel go? Oh, there it is. I see it. This is our billet of uh, mosaic. So it's a big, we're gonna do a technique that um, I first heard of from a guy named David Lish, my buddy Dave Lish. Told me about loafing, so you get a billet, you cut that loaf off, and then you kind of squish it down. And I like the way it distorts. This is something I just call it tiger stripe pattern. So we're gonna see, we're gonna cut it off and see what it looks like. Okay, I got an Elton John song stuck in my head. <laughs> That's not a bad one to have. There's some bad songs that get stuck in your mind. I guess the way to get it out is you have to get all the way to the end of the song, right? I'm just checking because I don't have. Like there's better ways, I'm sure, to measure where you want to cut. I just want to cut the very end off of it. Okay. Hopefully, I don't ruin my saw blade because they're expensive. <laughs> Just cut it really slow and see how it goes. Um, looking for something. Man, we have our tool here. I do have a pump for this thing. I just got it running, so I don't have the, I don't have that hooked up. So this is, uh, this is live. And if this screws up, then you watch me say bad words, or maybe I won't. Maybe I'll just be like, ah, c'est la vie. Nice. How's it going? Yeah. I went and did this to see if I would like kind of the hammer shape on there, but I don't like it. I think I'd leave it straight. Yeah, I'll leave it straight. But the scallop bit here, I think I like. Yeah, we might be able to do that. Yeah, that's cool.
seem to be doing fine. Yeah. It's just going to take a while, but. Kind of boring to watch, but it's exciting to see what the pattern is going to look like. So when you make when you make uh, linear Damascus, you know that's la like layers on layers. And I don't know if we talked about this, but the the more you work it, the finer the pattern gets. And when you make mosaic, it's on the end of the bar. Now, I'm not making a geometric mosaic pattern. I personally don't, I appreciate them. I just don't like them in my work. I like uh, action and motion. I like my Damascus like a Frazetta painting. You know, I want it to be sexy. I want it to be action and motion. I, I appreciate the geometric patterns. You know, the I always call it quantum Damascus. But I like, I like bold activity, like my friend Dave Lish, he does a lot of bold activity in his Damascus. Really cool looking. I like that. That's one of the things I like. I like to do that in mine. Uh, when I do W's, I, I don't like to accordion cut to reveal the pattern because I'm wasting all this steel. And that's been done often. Uh, Don Fogg is the guy who developed the whole W pattern. If you don't know who Don Fogg is, look him up. He's one of the most ultimate awesome bladesmiths who ever who ever steal in a fire so he's one of my favorites very inspirational knife maker he's retired from it now but um he's he's the person who came up with the w pattern um you could come pattern if you want to but it looks like right <laughs> m pattern <laughs> me a quick call it m. so it's w pattern but point is so what i like to do is i like to make a big loaf like i make the w's i stack them i'll restack them so they're really fine so the pattern is so fine you kind of it's kind of hard to see oh it's cutting good we get a little bit more grease here that's nice so i did a really weak annealing i don't like to do that um but when you want to cut hard you know hard steel you kind of have to do that and that's not my favorite so i got it up to 1600 degrees and over about eight hours it cooled down every hour every hour till i got to a certain place and then i let it cool off the rest of the way so i don't like doing that but we're gonna forge these some more and normalize them and all that stuff so we've been doing some forging but my point is with the with the pattern when when the w's are so fun you can't see them when you forge it it gets bigger again so Linear patterns, like ladder and raindrop and all the, you know, random, which is not random. Uh, when you forge those, they get finer. When you forge this, it gets bigger. So you have to make it small enough so that when you make it big again, uh, it is the size you need it to be. Hopefully that makes sense. I think it does. What you got? Oh, yeah, all right. Well, that's cool. That's still too thick right there, ain't it? Oh, a little bit, but we'll blend that all in. That's going to be nice. Thomas Hawk. That's a great size. It's really interesting, um, like what we were talking about, you know, when you see, like, an axe in a movie. Speaking of movies, if you watched my movie review, I was having fun, but I hope you had fun, too. And... Um, 
You see an axe in a Viking movie and it's like the head's like this big and that big. You know how much that would weigh? Too much. That right there is cool. That's handy. That'd be great. A little hammer pole. You probably won't want to use it though because it's going to be too pretty. I know. <laughs> it's going to be hard to make myself do it. All right. You're done. Cool. All right. Okay, now we'll we'll grind it a little bit and we'll see what it looks like. Hey, you can be in here. Goodbye, yellow brick road. Oh, you know what? I'm gonna use Curtis's. I'm just gonna go over here to Curtis's because Yeah, he's got a finer one on there and that's what we want. Should should be good. Yeah. So I just want to get it clean enough so that I can see that pattern. Someone asked, why don't you use a cold cut saw? No, oh, that's a good question. I don't even know what a cold cut saw is. <laughs> so if you have one and you want me to demonstrate it live on YouTube and promote your product of a cold cut saw. Send me one, I'll use it, everybody can see. Now I know what a cold cut saw is. Um, a cold cut saw, if we were cutting this, it'd probably take the teeth right off of it. Cold cut saw is great for cutting, you know, like construction grade steel and mild steel and all that kind of stuff. That's cool for that, but um, in this, I have a carbide tip band saw, it's cutting pretty slow, but the cold cut saw, is wonderful but I don't think it would work really well for this because I, I'm pretty sure it knocked the teeth off of it because this is hard steel and the cold cut saw is really made for cutting like tubing and pipe and angle and stuff like that like clean steel that you'd be using in a construction or fabrication setting where most of that is aluminum or um, you know not hardened steel not steel that's already been hardened this steel's been in the forge, so it's a little difficult to work, and that's why I use that. And it's, it's maybe slightly in the old. Hope that answers your question, but um, all right. So we're, we got a good, we got it flat enough and clean enough. I'm gonna clean it and then we're gonna etch it and see the pattern. Can't see it yet, I gotta wash it off. The audio wasn't synced for about 20 minutes so you looked like a kung fu movie. Oh shit. <laughs> it's a dawn, nobody can see me in the bathroom. I'm just gonna wash this off because I don't want to. I just want to get all this crud off of here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Where is that thing? There it is. All right, you want to see what it looks like?
I might have to dunk it, but. Can you see it in the camera? No? I mean, we'll etch it for a minute. That's not enough. It's, it's cold, so it's trickier to etch. Yeah, we just have to etch it. It's just going to take a minute. So be patient. I didn't know how big of a tank man it was. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I can't see it, so I'm about to get my real glasses, not my safety glasses, because I can't see a dead blasted thing right now. Thought to put them in, oh, now they are. Right in my pocket. Yeah, I'm just walking around in circles, you know, like an idiot. I got them in my pocket, and I didn't know. I didn't even know. Oh, yeah, it's real fine, but it's cool. Okay, this is nice. Special guest, uh, Quentin Middleton, like I told you. Quentin is a friend of mine. I met him when he was about 17, and he started making all these kung fu swords and stuff. And then he started making chef's knives, and he's one of the best there is. Somehow, <laughs> I've lost one of the little nubbins off the damn, this is a terrible table. All right, now it's clean enough, we should be able to see it. So, what I'm gonna do is, uh, hang tight, I gotta grab something real quick. You can just watch him for a second. I'm just preparing something. See how tight the pattern is? Can you see it? It's really fine right now. So this is the direction we'll forge it so we can get the tiger strike. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Can you see it? I can't really see it. I'm not really sure what I'm looking at. Let's so go going to light. I need a paper towel. Need a what? So something to wipe it off with. So one of the things I was talking about was when you do this, this loafing, the pattern is really fine. Oh, there it is, okay. Now those lines are just where we stuck it together. That's just the gray is weld. Mush it and spread it out. Yeah, it'll be, it'll get big again. Let me ask it one more time. Uh, 
All right. Now you can see it. Can the camera see it? You guys see it now? So you see how fine the little, the little W's are all in there? So when we do it this way and the head goes that way, it'll be like, it'll get bigger, like tighter stripes. So that's it. That's like 2,800 layers. <laughs> All right, that looks great. We're gonna, we're gonna have fun with this. Okay, so I have to figure out how much we need to make the pattern. Let that sit right there and etch. <clears throat> all right, that's going to be nice. So let's just wipe all this. How's it going with your knife? Oh, nice. So, is that going to be a hidden tang? Yeah. Hidden tang or uh, uh, a three-part construction. Okay, that's cool. Can you see the core? Yes. Is it in the center? Yeah, it's in the center. Oh, good. We, we did a good job. So, that was. this is uh, some sand my stainless on both sides, carbon in the center that we made last night. So, we all made a bar of that. Quinn's making a... Now, what do you call that style knife, Quentin? This is more of a, a K-tip or Ketarsuki. And so it's more for professional chefs versus a, um, a Gyoto. Um, Which is the f Japanese version of a French knife. Correct. And yeah. that's why I don't ever use that word. <laughs> but trust me, I get tripped up on it myself. So. I know. I think it's funny how everybody has, I'd like a Gyoto. I was like, you mean a French, a French knife? knife? <laughs> I'm not Japanese, <laughs> so I can't make a Gyoto. Well, hey. I think that they have to be made specifically in Japan by a Japanese smith. No, I can make it too, if I want to. I guess you can. <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying, like, I get it, but I'm in a little bit of a quandary because it's a French knife. Well, then. But it's a Japanese style French knife. It's like a fusion, so I like to do that too. Mm -hmm. So I like to do that K-tip, but I make it a little more aggressive. Well, I'm a little bit more subtle. Yeah. <laughs> Did you? I like the, so I made, I don't know if you remember, when I went, did I show you the knives before I went to the Seattle show a couple years ago? Yeah. And I had the fullers in them. Mm -hmm. and I, so I put fullers in them, and everybody was like, oh, gosh, they're so heavy. Nobody's going to like that. And they were like point one one zero at the thickest part with tapers with fullers in both sides. Mm -hmm. It was cool. Man, I got to do them again. You had so many ideas. I remember that one time you had drilled a hole right in the middle. Oh, yeah. Like, but then somebody else had already done it. I think um, I think Jesper Voxenese already did mm -hmm. it. And I was just like, go. Oh! I liked it because I thought you, you know you could pinch your fingers, like, yeah. <laughs> and then I have to pay spider coat for hole. Can you imagine? I that, and yeah. I think this is cool because someone has a patent on a negative space. <laughs> it's cool. I yeah. I really like it. I don't think it's stupid. I think it's cool. All right, now how much of this do we need? I, not being a mathematician myself, uh, we'll just have to calculate this indubitably. <laughs> Word before. You never heard it from, uh, <laughs> like, Sherlock Holmes. Let's go, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> You're fine. Get your shit and go home. <laughs> I just kidding. I don't want that. Trash. Okay, now. Hmm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to figure this out. It won't take me too long. Three hours later. There's the ruler. There's the marker. You like my idea. What? So you can just eyeball those and magically know how much spare yeah. steel's got to go in. It's a knack, actually. <laughs> Special gift. <laughs> so we got to, we have like it. Mm, well, you might have taken a few knocks in the head since you got them calibrated. I have. Quite a few. <laughs> I think we need um, 
I'm just thinking out loud, so don't. This is one of those things, like if you ask me, how many do I need to make that thing that you made? I don't know, I don't know. I'm just looking at mass, I'm just looking at the size, and I'm trying to determine from that size how much I need. So, a one, a two, a three. A three licks to get to the Tootsie Roll center of a Tootsie Pop. So I'm gonna go with that, and that is just a hair a little bit over, it's two and, well, it's ex well, um, I don't measure too good. But this is two and a quarter of inches. And the width is one and three quarter inches by one and a half inches. I think this is gonna be great. Great. Yeah. Okay. Okay, man. Hey, could you bring that ruler over here? Hey. Don't let it cut. Once it, once it gets going, just spray some of that juice in there. Okay. It's cutting easy. Shit, it's cutting too fast. Yeah. That should be plenty. That should be good. Well, I'll get the Fords cranked up. So, yeah, it's cold. I'm sorry. Watch out. I'm gonna get some better glass than these Walmart ones. I can see like over there just fine. I, so I had laser surgery on my eyes. I don't know, I told some people, but um, not, be, anyway, it was not good. It wasn't a good thing, but they're good now. Um, the problem is, is I can see far off just fine, but I can't see near, so. I can see good close up. These are just some Walmart. These are like 1.25 power ones. I'll be like, listen, you're in trouble. All right. Is that piece hot? No, it's, it's warm. All right, so they don't want you to help me. So go over there and grab that thing. We're gonna pick this up a bit. Turn this off, pick this up just enough. And I'm gonna loosen it. Damn, 
I'm, I'm so strong. I didn't even know how strong I was. I tightened it so tight. Can't loose it. All right. All right. Pull it back just a bit. Oh, just a bit, actually. All right. That was perfect. Now let's... Uh, Okay, there we go. On. Add that right there, right? Man, this is a dream. I'm so glad I bought that thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had, uh, my friend Jeremy Ritchie came last week and we got it all running. We got the um, the hydraulics working on it. I don't have the, the the wet part working yet, but I will. So it's a process. When you get old tools, I think that new would be ridiculously expensive. Thousands of dollars. I got it for pretty cheap. So. And it's cold. It's supposed to snow. Oh, man. All right, what we'll do is um, over here where the command center is, we'll be doing some welding. I'll weld it somewhere else. <laughs> we'll, we'll do it over here, it's okay. Uh, hey, can one of you fellas bring that leg vise over here? And then we can use that to weld the handles on. Oh yeah. So when you do this, you do this like a wah handle or what? Oh. So that's I, cool. I changed, I changed my mind about the three-part construction. So this is this this whole thing will slide straight into the handle. Nice. And you can take this all smooth and clean on your surface grinder. Core is in the core. That'll be cool, man. So one of the things I will tell you when you heat treat this, um, as soon as you harden it, don't fool around. Get it in the temper instantly, like immediately, because it will want to go pew. I never worked with that steel, so what's the... Uh, it's 80 CRV2. What's the, uh, the max temp for this? I mean, the hardening temp for this. 1500. 1500. Uh, we can normalize it a couple times now if you want. So what we need is to get a little hole in there. If you can drill a hole in it, um, I got it. just in the back, so we can hang it in the thing. We'll normalize it. Okay. Yeah, let's bring it right over here. So we'll use this. We'll we'll. Um, oh boy, what camera angle are we on? Because I want I want to explain this a little bit too. One. All the way in there. That's good for now. So when you're, when, well, I don't care. I mean, like when I'm doing it, I don't know how everybody does this stuff. So that's one of the things about bladesmithing and knife making. Uh, I'm primarily self-taught. Uh, I watched something one time. I went to the ABS school, I watched someone forge, you know, they didn't say forge like this. They just forged and said, okay, do that. So. I just forge, um, but but I I've been a good student because I will watch other makers, I will watch welders, I will watch sculptors, fabricators, bladesmiths, knife grinders, and I'll learn techniques from them. One time I was trying to figure out how to, I was trying to figure out how Vince Ed was grinding his swords so flat, and I saw a picture of him in Blade Magazine, and he had the blade turn on an angle like this to get more surface on the grinder. And it was like, boom, that's all I needed. And I understood, I was like, what are you doing? That makes sense. So whenever I'm working on something, I just try and play with it. Now this, this is a cool thing. Doing these loafs, one of the problems with them is if you don't kind of massage them, like work them down really nice and easy, they might want to tear. But one of the ways to keep them from tearing is normalize them. Uh, and 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 weld banding around them. So this is a process that takes a while, and sometimes it's kind of boring to watch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to weld around, not the end, the end, the top and the bottom are the ends. That's the pattern reveal. So everything else is just junk. We don't care about that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to weld all the way around them, and then we're going to throw them in the forge, and we're going to normalize them. 
Why normalize before I forage again? Well, when you are making Damascus, you're running these high temperatures, you know, 19 to 2300 degrees and long periods of time back and forth. So the structure inside is very large, large crystalline structure. Imagine like sand. If we broke this and looked, it looked like sand. Uh, and that's not good. That has a tendency to want to tear apart when you throw it back in there and you start working it again. But if, but if we bring it back, if I bring it back to normalizing, what I've noticed, and, I, and this is something that Steve Schwarzer taught me, was uh, you'll have less of a chance for it to tear. Um, or if you do a twist pattern, if you normalize the bar two or three times, like higher normalizations, like 1600 degree levels, and then let it air cool down to room temperature, then you'll be able to twist it more without it tearing or unraveling or anything. So anyway, those are some things to take in consideration. These are also hypotheses. So I test them. I, I take that into consideration. It's like, okay, I'll try that. Once I try it, if it works, then I'll try it again. I might, tr I might do it three or four times in a row. It works, bam, 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 bam. And I was like, okay, well, I'm, I'm building my knife theory here. Now, second I get some new information in there, I'm gonna add that information if it's better, and I'm gonna use that information. And I hope that makes sense. This is a process of always learning, perpetually learning. Um, I know people who'll say, oh, I got this, I know this, I do it perfectly exact on the money every time. Well, good, that's good that you can do that, but I always wanna get better at it. I wanna learn and do better all the time. So I, I wouldn't say that I do know, but I, I know how to make it work. So I'm always trying to approve, improve upon the process. So we can roll that door down. This is carbon monoxide poisoning, no big deal. I mean, it'll warm up in here and then we'll start getting dizzy and lightheaded. <laughs> no, it's, it's all right. All right, we got any questions over there, Ryan? Yeah, we got a few. Um, what do you use for etching? I use ferric chloride for etching. It's circuit board etchant. One part ferric chloride, four parts distilled water. Next question. Uh, not really a question, but more of people saying you're old. Huh? You're old. Who's saying that? Everybody. Your eyes. <laughs> oh yeah, well it happens. I was gonna say something else, but old is a state of mind. I'm, but I'm still ripped. <laughs> so I don't care what you say. All right, we need one more. All right, we want it to be the same as these. Oh yeah, these are both the same. Okay, good. Slide the piece of yeah, that needs to go back. Push that all the way back up underneath there. And then we'll let this fall down a bit. What's the importance of normalizing after forging? Uh, I've been talking about that over and over and over and over again. Um, I have a series called Forged. It's a web-based series. And I talk about normalizing over and over again, like I've been doing in here. So watch that and you'll find out. It's a good question though. It's, <laughs> if, you, if you don't normalize your blades after you forge them, more than likely, oh yeah, that's, okay, tighten that up. I feel like we answered that last week. Go back last week and watch that video. For real, go watch the one we did last week. I'm sure I explained it in there. <laughs> it's a good question, but like I, it, so there's a lot of questions that people ask and they're elementary questions, but they're good questions. So what's the importance of normalizing? Normalizing is exactly what it sounds like. Normalizing the steel. Once you've done your foraging, you have all these extreme temperatures, all this violence that you've, um, you know, put into your blade. You're beating it, and you're shaping it, you're moving it. 
And now what are you going to do? You're going to go grind it and harden it? Oh, my blade broke. Well, if you watch this History Channel show, everybody breaks their blades all the time. But you notice they don't do something, and that's called normalizing. So normalizing is fine, even, uniform grain structure in the steel before you grind or harden or any of these other steps. It's the beginning of heat treating. So normalizing, look it up too. You can look it up, normalizing steel. You'll see the range. Uh, the ranges are between 1600 and 1400. I stick to one simple one generally when I'm doing this type of steel. Um, 1500, 1500, 1500. It all depends, if I tweak it for something else, you know, I might go up to 1600 and let it come down, but generally it's 1500 degrees. Huh? We're just cutting steel right now, so if there's any more questions we can answer. Niels you know? Vandenberg. Niels Vandenberg, what's up? South Africa. South Africa. I like Niels Vandenberg. Not a lot of questions, but just a lot of talking back and forth from everybody. Okay, good. That's good. All right. Good, cut it. All right, let's bring all those over here. Good night, yellow brick road. What are you doing right here? Welding. Not with the GoPro right there. You want me to move it? I can move it over because I don't want to get it on this equipment. I don't want the splatter to get the equipment. Okay, we'll wipe them all clean. Let's get a rag and wipe them all clean. Cool. Perfect fluxless wells. <laughs> I wanna, this is what's cool. I just want to, we're going to do something here interesting, right? So, um, somebody was telling me about, what is it, bladesmithing for beginners? So if you're a beginner, if you're, there's a forum on Facebook, it's called Bladesmithing for Beginners. And if you're a beginner, or if you're an, uh, an OG like me, you should still be a good student. So I don't use flux, I don't use kerosene, I don't use WD-40, I don't use any of that anymore because I figured out why the welds stick and the why the welds don't stick. And um, I will show you some, this says, technically this is 2,800 welds in this, 2,800 pieces of steel welded together. Um, we started out with two stacks of 30. We made C's, we turned the C's into W's, and we restacked the W's. So each one of these has 2,800 layers approximately. So I'm just going to clean one up and show you, show you the steel. And you won't be able to tell what kind of steel it is by looking at it because it just looks like mono steel. So there's you can use flux, it's totally fine if you want to use flux, but I don't use it, I don't find it necessary to use. So I'll get one piece really clean and show that. drinking my coffee.
I'm just showing how nice the steel is. If you're out there in, is that dust on the camera lens? Maybe. So your welds with no flux and no kerosene and no W, and I'll, I'm convinced that nobody knows exactly what the kerosene does, because I don't think they tested it. But anyway, it doesn't matter. Point is, this is what the welds look like with no flux, no anything, just a dry weld. That's what it looks like. It's all stuck. There's no void, there's no flaw. It's a perfect weld. And uh, I, I like doing that because I know what I, I uh, it's clean, it's beautiful. When I etch it, it's, it's gonna, I mean, it's gonna be awesome, so. Let's go look at that other piece. French. What? Hey, Liz French. Hey, what's up? I don't know where the bottle of Windex is. I can't see it. <laughs> I can't see nothing. Hey guys, this is gonna. Man, curses takes like forever. Excuse me. All right, so what I'm gonna do is we're gonna we're gonna weld banding around these. And then we're gonna, maybe I should normalize them first and then weld the banding around them. We wanna normalize these really good. And that way when we're, when we're crushing these down, we're, we're getting them down to get our head. 
Where's the heads at? Where's the little tomahawk head? Tom, grab the heads over there. Just a good one. <laughs> Just a good one. Just the good one. The good one. <laughs> well, he's a good brother. <laughs> Bring him over here. <laughs> so I hope this makes sense. This is this is a really important revelation to me as a bladesmith. Uh, it solved a lot of my problems. I used flux when I first started for years. I I was I was told that it was protecting the surface from oxidation, and that's. That's probably true, you know, to a degree. But I also learned better techniques for forge welding that uh, I just played with. I would, I would do things differently. So I, I, I don't hot cut and fold. I do clean, clean pieces, I clamp them together tight, I weld them up, stick them, and they stick. And if I get a place where it looks like, man, that's coming apart, I'll put it back in the forge until the scale dissolves, which only takes a few minutes. And I don't use flux to dissolve it. The, the heat will dissolve it. The scale is very high carbon steel. It'll dissolve and then boom, it'll stick back together. No big deal. So there we go. All right. Yeah. See, let me show you my calculation. A one, a two, a three, a four. <laughs> So this is this head is it's four times as thick, you know. Yeah, that's that's all you need. Whoops. If you think about it, the body of this hatchet is uh, which way is this? That's the this is the way we're gonna take it. There there we are. You know the body of it's already right there. That's the size. So we're gonna pull out for this and pull back for that. We're gonna leave this the same thickness. And we're gonna pull this out. So we'll have. Maybe we have the extra. If we do, we'll leave it thicker, which is so it'll be a little bit heavier. So that'll be nice. But a, but a hatchet this size, man, is great for, it's not good for felling trees. You could do saplings, but a hatchet this size is really great. Uh, this is, I like this because it reminds me of the council tool Woodcraft and Dave Canterbury designed that ax. It's a cool ax. I got one, I really like it. And uh, like, I like, I was talking to somebody, was I talking to y'all about the Gransford Brooks axes? We were talking about it yesterday. Oh yeah, yeah, I love those axes. Those are great. I used to be a dealer for them. Me and Adam had like the big battle. We had all kind of crazy axes for them. And I like, I still like their um, the splitting axe. It's like a real heavy head. So I'm going on a rant, yeah. But I, anyway, I like that. That's a great little size. This is something we just kind of based on this and designed it today. Small hogs like that for you know skinning a rabbit. I think it's awesome. That sort of stuff. Yeah, I had a lot of guys take my tomahawk and skin deers and elk and all kind of stuff. I think this is a great. You can use your hatchet for many, many, many things, and you can kind of. It's kind of weird. I like the idea of carrying a hatchet in my belt everywhere. Like, I think it's cool. I just take it to dinner and cut steak with it. You know? Steak knives in restaurants suck. They're the worst. So, shoot, I was turning this down. Turn that down. Hey, can that camera pick this pattern up, or is it too? Can you see it? 
Yes or no? Can't see it? Okay. Okay, cool. Got a hole in it? Yeah. Let me see. Okay, cool. All right, can it pick this up? Oh, let's see this one. Is it picking up? Okay, so this is our pattern. And we're gonna, the ax head's gonna go this way. Whoop, and the, palm, the pole's gonna go that way. There you go. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Kool-Aid. Oh, didn't make it in there. The Kool-Aid man and macho man Randy Savage sounded oddly alike, don't you think? I mean, you ever thought about that? You think Randy Savage was moonlighting just the Kool-Aid man? That's a super Could be. So we're going to come down on it like this. That's right. And then stretch it out this way. That's right. Long ways, right? Or are we... We're going to separate all those tight lines. And pull it out. The teeth, the, the head will go this way and the gotcha. other pieces will go that way. So, so that they go like a tiger stripes. Like, like, grr, baby. You know what I'm saying? It's super fine. It's super fine. I like to say super fly. I need Jesus glasses. Right here. Hey, you want to see him? <laughs> yeah, there, but that's what you do when you want to, when you got to make them big again, you got to squish them down that direction. Yeah, boy. Let me see yeah, that. Boy. From now, from the rest of the day, only gullah. <laughs> I know you are. <laughs> no doubt. For true. For true. I can't tell you how much I miss that. All right, it's good. I can't see a damn thing, so just get it out of my face now. I'm sick of it. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm, we're on a race to see who's... We'll see. Oh, whoa, Curtis is getting up faster than mine. That's crazy, dog. Oh, that's way smaller. So. Anyway, we're gonna, we got to wait till that gets up. So in the meantime, we can do something else. Any questions pop up in the meantime? I have not, and that's why I was thinking about it, because you know they both sound the same. Yeah, step into a Slim Jim. Kool-Aid. I don't even remember what the Kool-Aid man said. He just said, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. oh. <laughs> wait a minute. Let me get out the time machine here. All right. Let's see if someone's done a video on this real quick. Kool-Aid Man and Macho Man Randy Savage are the same person. This is Kool-Aid Man verse run. He's... What? There's a lot of stuff on YouTube about it. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Like it was, let's see. Let just just a moment, just to see while we're in intermission here. I just want to see him. I don't want to see that. That's Macho Man. Kool Aid Man. <laughs> Can you imagine how scary that is? Like, how are you going to get kids to drink Kool Aid when the dude's busting through the wall? You thirsty? Oh, yeah. I'm not going to pull it up now. You see what's going on in the background? I like that. 
All right, what was I gonna do? We're waiting. A lot of times with heat treating is waiting. This part though, this, this normalizing this Damascus, I know that if I don't do it, I will get tears. And I spent, we spent two days making this steel and we don't wanna get tears. What can we do in the meantime? You guys let me show you, huh? You wanna make one or you want me to show you how to make one? I was watching, yes, you can show them. We could do, a, I could do, uh, we could do something really quick. While we're waiting on that to heat up, you guys have seen this before, I'm certain. But we'll, we'll, uh, we'll just forge a blade real fast while we're waiting on the oven to heat up. Now, mine's getting faster now, but the problem with mine is, yeah, Adam made that. Is that okay? Everybody wants to know where the chef's knife was from last week? I appreciate that. That's the fun thing about YouTube. Like, I'm really not, I don't know, huh? Yeah, it's, it's kind of cool. I can go back and watch it. I want the things that you're, the idea behind what we're doing is we want to be enlightening and entertaining. I want to share the knowledge and the wisdom and the information. I want you to be able to see bladesmithing and blacksmithing, all these different metal arts as a, as a fine craft, as an art. It's my art and that's why I like to share it. I want to try and ask and answer questions and ask questions and I want to have fun doing it. Um, I met a lot of, a lot of uh, people who are interested in this but they think sometimes it's unapproachable and uh, I'm not unapproachable. I did this thing, they always, what I, you know what I hated? I just thought about something. I'm gonna talk about that thing, that History Channel thing. I, I hate being portrayed as a grumpy, brooding jerk, because that's not, <laughs> if you're watching a show on History Channel where they make knives, there's actually three hours of forging happening and then there's three hours of handle making. So they just cut what they want. So I'm not sitting there going, the whole time, I really, I'm laughing and joking most of the time. There was even, I think me and Will got in a fight on one episode, maybe the second time, but I don't want to talk about that too much. But the point is, is I want you to enjoy this as something very special, something that you can do, you can learn, you can enjoy. Uh, you don't need tons of equipment. Ooh, I want to show you a cool anvil. Let me go grab it. I'm going to show you an anvil that you can get, and it's not expensive, and they'll ship it to you in the mail. I'll be right back. <laughs> oh, this damn thing is heavy. What's funny, it's, it's like 75 pounds. This is a great little animal. I'm gonna set it up on top of the other one. We're gonna talk about it for a minute. So, I met these guys at Portland, Portland. And uh, do you remember, he came over, he was like, hey, your sticker is like our sticker. So let me show you some cool stuff. This is all you need as a bladesmith. Uh, most bladesmiths don't know what the horn is for anyway, so it doesn't matter. So this anvil, 75 pounds, you have to mount it on a stand like this, so build a, a three-legged tripod stand, silicone it to it, you'll have a wonderful anvil. Radius, this side's already radius, you can dress this a little bit, it has a hardy hole. This is a cast 4140, I think, um, but uh, I, I mean, let me get a hammer. Bounce this thing off of here. Put my safety glasses on. I like it. I need to get it mounted. And then we'll be using it, we'll be using this in the class, but man, this is a great little anvil. I just had a ball bearing, I can show you the return on it, but this is one you can get for I think they're less than 300 bucks, and uh, they will ship it right to you, and it's good. And we'll be using this more in the shop. 
I want to have something people come in, they ask me, where'd you get your anvil? Uh, that's from 1936, you know, you don't, I don't get that again. So real quick, um, did we, did we do a thing last week where we for, we didn't do that. Well, that video where we forged all the stuff by hand. Oh, okay, coming out this week. So I'm not gonna, I'm just gonna do it by the machine. I like using the hammer. To the point, no faking. Cooking MCs like a pound of bacon. Hey, did you ever see that guy, Marty Ray, the Marty Ray Project? He, he sings this Vanilla Ice song so awesome. I didn't know who he was, but uh, he was in Charleston and he was singing. I was like, that guy's dope. You know, he's singing some cool stuff. So I started following him. Anyway, Marty Ray Project sings the best version of Ice Ice Baby you ever heard. And I have a bad habit of butchering songs while I'm forging. And some buddy, probably me, it's probably me, knocked that coffee off of there. But that's okay. I didn't want it anyway. Okay. Boom, 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 boom. This is getting there. All right. Let's get these chunks and where the chunks go. Hey guys, I'm chunking the chunks in. I'm gonna put these chunks in. Just can I use these? Eh, I can use them. Quentin. Mr. Middleton. Yes, sir. Let's have your knife. So I'm gonna normalize the knife, huh? Alright. Oh wow. It's like magic. Not bad for a newbie. Not bad for a noob. The noob the new guy. No, you OG now. OG. If you make thousand, how many knives do you think you made since, since 2006? Since 2006? I don't even want to know how many that is because that sounds painful. Well, painful. <laughs> <laughs> how many knives do you make? Uh, ass load. <sighs> Alright. What are we going to do? This? Alright. Chef's knife. Hmm. hmm. Just like that. Didn't take long, did it? <laughs> give him a sign off. Okay, thanks for watching. Um, these live feeds are very expensive. As you can see, we have a crew, we have 
equipment. Um, it's not free, but I want to bring the highest quality production to you so you can see these little antics we're doing. But con continue to subscribe, tell other people about the channel, and uh, you'll be able to watch new videos. We have some editing now, and they'll be out later on this week we're trying to we're trying to do something if not every day every other day and uh i really appreciate y'all so you'll get to see the results of this probably over on my instagram we'll do some photographs we might do a video but thank you and if you really want to learn get the ford series or contact me for a class so i hope you guys have a great day bye